Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome to my channel. So for those of you who are new, my name is Christiane, otherwise known here as I Heart Airbrush. And today, we're gonna be doing a stress test on the Graftobian Glam Air Foundation. Yes, you heard me right. I posted my review, final thoughts, intro video on the Graftobian Glam Air Foundation. And you know, it's time to just put up. And I'm gonna go ahead and share with you the kind of results that I saw during my trials and tests when I was using this foundation on its own. So if you're interested in seeing how this foundation holds up on its own, okay, as an airbrushed option on my oily, combo oily skin with some texture and discoloration, because I always have to mention that, okay, then please keep on watching. All right, so I went ahead and did my eye makeup right now, just using airbrush makeup per usual. I'm going to go in and take the micellular water on a little cotton pad and just take any dirt and oil off of my skin. This is what I normally do in my routine, especially my T-zone. I try to get everything off. All right, so next I'm going to go in with under eye concealer. Pardon my hair sticking up, you know. Um, I'm going to go in with some concealer. So for that, I'm going to be using the Graftobian HD Cream in the shade Desert Sand. Just under my eye, of course. Then I'm going to go in and airbrush. So today I'm going to be taking the Graftobian Glam Air Foundation in the shade Desert Sand and then I'm going to pop in a drop of Golden Sunset just to deepen it up just a little bit. Shake it up. Now this foundation is recommended to be sprayed out between a 2 and 4 PSI which if you're using the Dynair compressor like I am is relatively low. So I've just been setting my dial at around between 9 and 10 o'clock. Um, I figured that's low enough because 12 o'clock is about a 5.5 PSI. So uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and go in. As you can see, my blemishes are all apparent here and I'll show you a close up so that you can see my skin before and then I'll show you the after. Okay, so now that you've seen the before, let's go in with the foundation. So I've just been using about six drops of desert sand and I always start with a few um, drops and if I need to double up, get more coverage, I just add more in there. I don't dump a bunch of product into my cup. This formula is pretty liquidy and um, I move without putting a cap on the top of it even though they do recommend putting a cap on the top of it. So I do have to move relatively so I don't want to fill my cup up too much because then I run the risk of getting product coming out of my cup. So now I'm just taking one drop of the Golden Sunset and then I'm going to back bubble and because the consistency is so thin, it makes mixing the um, makeup in the cup super easy. Everything mixes really quick because it's so thin with just the lightest um, tug on the lever here, as you can see, just light, super light and it's already mixed together. Now I'm going to go in and apply my foundation like so using both circular and swiping motions. I'm very light on my lever. The foundation, when it gets on your skin, it feels very wet. Um, not very wet. I want to say it feels like a light mist. Like you Have you ever had one of those misting bottles with the fans? It kind of feels like that. Okay, you want to stay really light on the lever. You don't need a lot of tug back on the lever because it is a thinner formula. Okay, I'm going to try to build the coverage just by adding it, going somewhere else, and then going back to that area and adding it again. You always want to make sure that when you're building coverage that your layers are drying in between. That way you avoid creasing or buildup that could sacrifice the end result or mess up the end result, not sacrifice. I don't even know what I'm saying today, girl. So when I say light on the lever, I'm like super light, like barely even tugging back, okay? That's where you want to be. You want to just feel a light mist. If you're feeling wet, you're pulling back too far on the lever. Thinner formulas require a little bit more lever finesse. Keep your distance. Okay, I'm going to go back and build the coverage around the nostril area. There we go. Let it dry. Okay, build the coverage where I need to. Okay, so this is after one layer. I'm going to go ahead and show you a close-up so you can kind of see. This is seven drops of the foundation sprayed lightly. OK, 
Okay, so now that you've seen the coverage is pretty light, I'm gonna go ahead and go in and double up and take another seven drops and try to build it up a little bit more. So this time I'm just gonna go in with seven drops of the desert sand because adding the golden sunset really, um, it's, it's too close of a match to my natural skin tone. So it won't allow for any color variations throughout the day when my oil starts showing through. Test out my spray, looks good. And we're just gonna keep on adding some more. Okay, nice and light. Make sure that my dial is down where it needs to be. Between nine and 10, it's a little bit above nine o'clock. Once again, it's recommended that this be sprayed between a two and four PSI per the website. I'll have the link in the description box below. They have tips and tricks on their website about the best ways to use this product. So I'm not gonna go off of my experience with other brands. You know I always do the research and try to utilize the product as at least, if not exactly, but as close as I can to how they recommend it. And I say as close as I can because sometimes you have to make adjustments depending on like your skin type and stuff. But for the most part, just do it how they recommend. Okay, I'm going to try to build here. Just a little bit. Really super light. Okay. Blend around. I think I overdid it a little right here. So I'm just going to pat it away before it sets down. And then kind of buff it. There we go. And then we have a little here. A little extra there. Okay, and that's it. There's no more in the cup. Alright, so this is doubled up on the layering. I found that this is where I need to cap it off. Otherwise, too much product is laid down and it ends up looking real thick and real cakey. So I'm going to go ahead and give you a close-up after I let this kind of set just a little bit. As you can see, it is starting to set down. And it is drying down, but there's still a fair amount of sheen coming through. I don't know if you could see that. But there is still a fair amount of sheen. Okay, so I'm just going to take my little fan, speed it up. So now my face feels dry, which is really good. And I still have like, I want to say like a semi-dewy finish. It's not like full-on dewy, but it's like definitely like, you know, it's it's definitely dewy, okay? It's not, it's not matte. So I'm going to go ahead and show you a close-up now so you can see the coverage that I achieved using, this is about 14 drops of the foundation. This is where I found to cap it off once again. I'm not gonna add any more because I tried adding more and it just looks a little too thick, a little too cakey. So this is where I cap it off. Okay, so let's go ahead and get you close up here. Now that you've seen a close up, I'm just gonna go in and um, finish off the under eye area, just kind of re-blend it a little bit. And I'm just gonna use the Ben Nye Banana Powder to set it. And I'm not gonna set the rest of my face because I want you to see how the foundation holds up on its own. I am gonna set down the cream though. Okay, so as the foundation is setting a little bit more, you can see that it is a little bit more mattified, but still there's a good amount of sheen coming through, especially like in the areas where I have like larger pores. So even though I did clear off my skin, I'm still getting some sheen here. Um, the more I built up the foundation, I guess the more matte that it started to look, but we'll see how it wears throughout the day because I found that the more you build this up, the more you layer on, the quicker it falls apart. So we'll see how that works out throughout the day. But overall, yeah, it's not it's not horrible. Definitely not horrible. Not the worst that I've ever used on my skin. It feels really good on the skin. Nice and lightweight. It doesn't feel greasy at all. It feels dry. It feels dry. I like the overall feeling on my face. But when, like when I touch it, it feels it feels a little it feels like it's got a little dew. It's got a little dew. But it looks good. Honey, look good. We ain't got a problem. So the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is apply blush on it because I want you to see how it works with um, other mediums now that it's nice and set. And in my review video, I did talk about how um, 
great. This product works in conjunction with other products, which is freaking amazing because I've tried some airbrush makeups that just don't work well with other mediums and other products, which makes it really difficult to use because sometimes you have to dip into other mediums and you don't want it to be patchy if you have to go over top. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take Milani Baked Blush because that's the one I like to use. And then a little fluffy blush brush, dip it in and then just give myself a nice little flush there, patting it in first and then swiping on the cheekbones. And as you can see, it did not disrupt the foundation at all. Now that it's nice and set, please give this foundation, if you try it out, enough time to set because if you do try to go in with a brush afterwards, you will rub the product off. I mean, it's only, it's only natural, you know? So just make sure you're giving this enough time to set. Now it doesn't take forever to set. As you see, I just, as you saw, I just used a fan and you know, it, it happened pretty quick, but it's definitely not a set on contact foundation, so. All right, and then I'm gonna go in with just a little bit of highlighter, and for that, I'm gonna be using the Urban Decay Kristen Leanne palette. I really like this highlighter palette. So I'm just gonna just touch over here because I don't wanna go anywhere near where I'm shiny because I don't want you guys to think I just put highlighter there. You know, I want you to know that's the foundation. So I'm just gonna, there we go. I'm not gonna go anywhere near my nose because I want you to see the progression of that throughout the day. But I am gonna put some on the tear duct. Sorry about my kids making noise in the background, you know. It's summer, okay? And then touch the brow bone, just at the arch. Okay, I'm not gonna put any on the cupid's bow. Like I said, I, I wanna keep the tear, the T-zone clear. Okay, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and airbrush my contour. And for that, I guess I will dip into a darker Graftobian shade. I don't prefer to use the Graftobian um, darker shades because I found them to be a little bit more orange, but we'll use it for today because I don't want to use another brand of airbrush makeup on my like face because I don't want it to interfere with the makeup. So I'm just going to go ahead and take a couple of drops of Midnight Marigold and I'm just going to pop it underneath where the blush is, okay? And then on the side. Now I didn't put any powder or anything. This is just the foundation. And then pop it underneath that blush. Okay. Now I know on camera it's gonna come out like, it's gonna look real nice. But in person this, it, it's orange to me. I don't, maybe it's just my eyes, but this shade looks just orange to me. Looks like it's got an orange tint to it. So that's my contour. I'm not gonna contour my nose. I don't wanna contour my nose with this. Um, so I'm just gonna leave it at that. So that's my contour. Let me see if I can get closer for you. So you can see the color. That's Midnight Marigold on my skin. So now that my makeup is done and everything, you can kinda see the finish. It is, you know, it's got a sheen to it. You know, it's like a semi-dewy. It may not be like full on dewy, like SB dewy, but like it's definitely not matte. It's not matte. It's a little bit more dewier than satin. So I'm not going to call this a satin finish, but I don't know. in some areas it's matted down. But like this, like all of this year, <laughs> and like all of this year, even when I cleaned it off of dirt and oils, it's like. It's still dewy, you know, it's still dewy, even after a while of being set, even here. And here it's pretty shiny. So if you have like combo, like this is the area where like my skin is pretty combination. Sometimes it's really dry, sometimes it's oily. And so like if you have combo skin, I can see you getting a decent like matte satin finish out of this foundation. But like if you have oily skin like me, this is what you can expect this level of shine, so like semi-dewy, like light dew, you get that. So yeah, and this is just with the foundation on its own. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do my liner, mascara, and brows, and then we're gonna come back, do a close-up, and then we'll do our check-ins, and that'll be it. That'll be it, bruh. Okay, just forewarning you, my kids are playing in the other room, so you're gonna hear them in the background just slightly. 
my apologies I am a mom of three but yeah I went ahead and finished my liner mascara and brows and now the makeup is complete and this is what it looks like it's only been a few minutes it doesn't take me that long to do my liner and brows and airbrush makeup and then the mascara it doesn't take long girl I'm gonna do one quick close-up and then I will do a check-in at the I don't know let's say the hour mark let's do the two hour mark so i'll do a check-in at the two hour mark a check-in at the four hour mark and a check-in at the eight hour mark so you can see how this makeup held up on its own all right so yeah i will see you guys in about two hours All right, and for my first check-in, it's been about two hours since putting on this foundation in the beginning. Um, I'd say my activity level is pretty sedentary right now. Um, it's really, really hot where I am, and in an effort to give the makeup a fair chance, um, I just decided to go ahead and stay indoors in my air conditioning apartment and kind of just lay around, you know. Anyways, so yes, um, this is about two hours into wearing the foundation. I'm going to go ahead and show you a close-up, but as you can see, I'm pretty shinier than I was before, and also my skin tone is a little bit darker than it was when I put it on. I think from my point of view, like in real life and everything, that I am seeing the oxidation of the makeup, but we shall see. Okay, I'll try to get the results as visual as, you know, I could see it in person, but it's really hard to do that under studio lighting and um, with the camera that I'm using. So I'm going to go ahead and give you a close up and we're going to go on and wait until the four hour mark. Unfortunately, I cannot be sedentary anymore because I do have some errands that I need to run. Um, so I'll try to keep everything as lax as I can and try to keep the kids away from my face so they don't mess it up. <laughs> it's so hard to do stress tests when you have three children. But um, yeah, anyways, I will try my best and hopefully you can see how this makeup holds up on its own. All right, close up. And I totally forgot to give you guys a timestamp, so it's 12.53 there, and yeah, so I am setting a timer for uh, the time in between, so we'll see you guys in about four hours. At the four hour mark, not in four hours. <laughs> I will see you guys at the four hour mark, so two hours from now. <laughs> Alright, so now we are at the four hour mark. And this is what my face looks like. Um, it's pretty greasy right now. It is 317 as you can see here. So we've reached four hours. I'm a little bit over four hours wearing the foundation as is like so. I haven't blotted or anything yet. So I will go ahead and give you a close up of what my makeup looks like. And we'll get into it. Okay, we'll get into it. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, explain what's going on with my skin. So I don't know if you could tell, but my skin tone is a lot more orange than when we started this, this journey. And this is what I mean about the foundation oxidizing. Um, it's, if you have oily skin, I mean, it's what happens, you know. Things tend to oxidize. Some not as... I guess easily as others <laughs> considering that I don't have this problem with my other foundation at least it's I don't recall it ever being this severe but um, I've definitely had worse oxidizing on my face <laughs> um, than this here but like you know it, it's apparent you can see it um, my makeup did start to break up a little bit around the nostril area hello oily skin it does that to makeup and I'm pretty like shiny everywhere <laughs> I'm like a grease ball right now so um, we reached the four hour mark which is pretty good um, this is around the time where I wouldn't check my makeup uh, where I would check my makeup normally so I'm gonna go ahead and blot right now and see how the makeup responds to the blotting powder because a lot of the times 
the makeup will stick to the oils and not to the skin and it'll actually come off with the blotting paper so I'm hoping that the Graftobian foundation does not do that um, but I do have to blot because if I leave it like this and I go to the eight hour mark that does no justice it does no justice to the foundation on its own so I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, blot get some of this oil off so it doesn't look like the foundation is coming off with the oils which is really good that means that it is on my skin really well and I told you not using a primer helps the makeup stick to your skin a lot better had I used a primer definitely would have seen more transfer of the makeup coming off with the oils on my skin and that's just experience, girl. I've had oily skin my whole life. So I could tell you a little some something, something about it. So we're just gonna blot this excess oil off here. You see already the difference? Okay. So let's just get the rest of it off so that we can see how it wears. And this is without powder, okay? So if this is just oil on the skin that blotting papers can just handle that's pretty good it's doing pretty good okay i don't got a powder because like i said in my review video i really don't prefer to powder my foundation i find that it makes the makeup look really cakey and it ages my skin just because of the fact that i have a lot of texture going on on my skin so adding that power powder kind of accentuates that texture no matter how finely milled of a powder there is but this makeup is doing really great without a powder just blotting it up and as you can see I'm being really careful blotting it just getting the oils trying not to move the product around too much but it seems like everything stuck to my skin pretty nicely and it looks like right now I'm getting less shine now blotting after four hours than I did when I initially applied this foundation because as you can see we're getting pretty mattified here. This is a lot more matte than when I first applied it, which it had a shine to it, if y'all recall. So let's just go ahead and get the oils off of my forehead, which there is a lot of oil on my forehead. There's a lot of oil on the forehead. So let's just get that off. Okay. And then I will do a close up for you after I blot all these excess oils off. And as you can see, it's only taking about one blotting sheet. I have a lot of extra space on this blotting sheet, which is pretty good. That normally doesn't happen with, you know, foundations that aren't, aren't as good. So this is already showing its colors here for being a good foundation. Yeah, you thought I was playing when I said some oily skin, man, I got some. I got some oily skin, okay? So it took about one blotting sheet. As you can see, there's a lot of extra patches on there. So I'm not gonna um, waste another blotting sheet because you know, these are expensive. But um, it only took one, which is pretty good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and give you a close up and then I will check in with you again at the eight hour mark to see how the makeup held up. All right, I've reached the eight hour mark. This is my final check in. The time is currently, let me see my notifications there, but it's 7.39 in the PM. So we are eight hours into wearing this foundation and as you can see, we've crumbled and died. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no um, we didn't crumble and die, but the makeup is definitely not in the best condition. Um, I'd say, well, let me go ahead and show you a close-up real quick, and then we'll get into the details because that would make the most sense. So, let's take a close-up here. Alright, so now that you've seen a close-up of my Skin. yeah girl um, I'm just gonna go ahead and blot right now because as you can see my skin is pretty oily pretty oily right now I did lose some pigmentation here and around the nostril areas predominantly in the in the places where I have the most oil 
Um, I didn't really lose any pigmentation on the forehead or on the cheeks here, but definitely on my nose, I did lose some pigmentation there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a little blot of roux. See if it takes any of the makeup with it. I did blot at the four hour mark, and as you uh, saw there, it only took one blotting paper, which is pretty freaking amazing if you ask me. Because some formulas, I can go through like two or three of them by the end of the day because my skin just freaks out. So I think as far as breathability, and if this makeup is breathable, I think it's definitely breathable because my skin did not wig out any more than it normally does. <laughs> Just get the rest of this oil off. There, so two blotting sheets for the day is not too bad. I did let the oil get pretty bad, though. I think my usual routine, my oils don't ever really get this bad. So I don't know what the difference is to tell you the truth, but I can say that at least I didn't lose a lot of pigmentation over my face. At least my makeup didn't become patchy or anything like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and take this off. I got the majority of the oils off of my face. There we go. Let's just get down to the cheeks there. All right, and so this is the end result after eight hours of wear. Um, yes, you can see that the makeup did oxidize. I'm a little bit darker than before. Probably can't see because the camera, the lighting kind of screws things up. But I will have inserts of photos that I took after each, every check-in to go ahead and show you the progression of the oxidation on my skin. Um, but yeah, let's just go ahead and give you another close-up now that I've blotted and everything so you can see, you know, how the makeup kind of held up. All right, so now that you've seen a close-up of my face post-blot, let's just go in and kind of discuss what we see here. There is just slight loss of pigmentation here, here, around the mouth area, nose here, and the nostrils. I did get a little bit of cracking in this little crease area here as far as my smile lines. <laughs> um, nothing happened there really, so that's good. Um, the finish, I'd say this, the finish is still, I don't know, I'd say it's still pretty, it's still pretty like satiny, semi-dewy, like it's not full on dewy, but it's definitely got a shine on my skin. Um, so I have to say I'm not all that jazzed about the finish, but yeah, and the fact that it oxidized, it oxidized quite a bit. So I'll insert some pictures of throughout the day, you know, so that you'll see. But yeah, so this video is pretty much just to go ahead and show you the wear of it because I already did my final thoughts and my review video that's already up. So I just wanted to go ahead and take some time to show you the wear so you can see what I went through. Um, the choice is yours whether you want to go ahead and try this foundation out or not. Um, I just want to go on record saying that I don't believe that this is a bad foundation at all. Um, I think that it does have a lot of potential. I just wouldn't use it as a one-stop shop for air, for an airbrush option, okay? So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and leave the comment section open and hopefully this will generate enough discussion about this product. If you've used it before, please comment in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your experience with this foundation and, you know, kind of exchange thoughts and experiences. I love to do that. And it also helps people who are passing by. Um, who might be interested in the foundation kind of get a bunch of different viewpoints, okay? So this is a community and we want to share information. So I would really appreciate if you engage in the comment section below. And yeah, hopefully you found this video helpful or entertaining. If you did, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. And please remember to subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. 
And if you choose to subscribe today, or if you're already subscribed, don't forget to hit that notification bell icon. It's a little bell icon right next to the subscribe button and turn on your notifications. That way you get the quickest updates anytime I upload a video. Okay, so the next video we have coming up on the dock is going to be the Graftobian Glam Air Foundation with um, a few other things to help it along, girl. Um, we're going to use primers, we're going to use powders, we're going to use all that good stuff and uh, see how it holds up that way. And then, of course, I will do the final installment. And it'll be a video on how I prefer to use this makeup because I had so much time to play with it and test it out that I did. I do actually have a way that I prefer to use this makeup. So I can't wait to go ahead and share that with you guys. But I will share that at the end because you gotta share the good stuff at the end. You gotta share the good stuff last, okay? It just kinda just builds and then you get the good stuff, okay? Anyways, I'm gonna end this here. Thank you so much again for watching and I hope to see you all in my next one. Bye.